so this uh, this Freudian image of human nature really dissolved for me uh, uh, during this psychedelic uh, work. I sort of realized that all those things that Freud is talking about are there. Certainly, you know, all the uh, all the sexual impulses of various nature and the aggressive impulses and so on. But I came to the conclusion that it's uh, more like a screen that sort of separates us from who we are, rather than and this being our true true nature. So the, the image uh, that uh, emerged out of it was more uh, kind of a Hindu image of uh, you know, uh, the, our true essence is, is uh, more like Atma Brahma than what, what uh, Freud described. Um, I also saw people repeatedly moving in the direction of uh, what Maslow described, sort of uh, moving from uh, values which were sort of imposed on people, you know, by the society, by the parents, to discovering their own value system, sort of meta-values, meta-motivations, uh, discovering a true sense of uh, justice and true sense uh, for beauty and so on. Uh, uh, sense of connection with other people, sense of connection with nature. Uh, spontaneous development of uh, ecological sensibilities, for example. How have your um, experiences in this domain affected your view of death, what death is all about? How did you view it previously and logically? Again, you know, coming from a materialistic background, coming from the medical background, uh, obviously, uh, you know, I saw myself as a body, as a body ego, and uh, I saw my consciousness as the product of the, of the brain. So it seemed absolutely obvious that when I die, you know, the brain goes, the consciousness goes, that's the absolute end of who I am. Um, that has changed very significantly because of, the, of um, you know, many of the experiences took me beyond what I considered to be to be death, uh, and uh, I can't say that I'm absolutely sure, but uh, you know, I, fe I th feel that it's pretty plausible that when we, when the body dies, that there is a continuation of the conscious, uh, conscious activity. Uh, I believe myself that it's going to be similar to what I experience in some of the, some of the psychedelic states. We actually did the work with. Uh, cancer patients, over 200 uh, cancer patients. And we had several instances where uh, the patients had psychedelic experiences. And then as the cancer advanced, they had actual near-death experience. For example, one patient who had uh, obstruction of the ureter, and they did an operation in cardiac arrest. And this was after he had had, uh, I think, two or three psychedelic sessions. And then when we talked with him afterwards, he said that he was glad he had these sessions because he knew the territory. Mm. The territory wasn't new. So we wow. compared, actually, those two. Mm. So, so, so listening to these patients, you, you have a sense that psychedelic work can be a preparation for death. Yeah, I have absolutely no doubt now that uh, the psychedelic experiences prepare us for, for dying. And I believe that that uh, actually any kind of powerful ritual activity, you know, whether it involves psychedelics or some powerful non-drug uh, mind-altering uh, uh, technology, that they are a preparation for for uh, dying. That we can talk about something like dying before dying. But when when we are sort of uh, in the incarnate form, we have to go through that experience sometime, but we don't have to wait until the biological demise, we can kind of do the homework while we are still alive, so that we develop this sense of transpersonal identity. We don't identify anymore with the body, but have a much larger sense so that when we're dying, it is, the, it is the body that's dying, it is not us that's dying. Abraham is Santa Clara, the uh, Augustinian uh, a monk from the 17th century, uh, Austrian German, said, uh, "The man who dies before he dies does not die when he dies." Mm. Uh, and I, you know, I really can uh, mm. uh, support it, you know, by the observations from my own sessions and from the sessions that I've seen. Mm.